4.5 billion years ago, when Earth first began to form, it was pummeling by meteorites and exploding volcanoes. According to scientists these meteorites coming from space delivered the genetic code of life today we know them as DNA. Microbes, the first known living forms, left traces of their existence in rocks some 3.7 billion years ago. They evolved into the earliest photosynthesizers on Earth, producing food out of water and using sun's energy while also releasing oxygen in the process. As a result, oxygen levels rose suddenly and dramatically, causing the environment to become used to it. However, a revolutionary event occurred when microorganisms started to live within other microbes, and as time went on, they transformed into cells. By merging together these cells gave birth to first animal on Earth known as sponge. What the what? 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 what, the what? what, the what? So this thing question. that happened 14 billion years ago, what is the predominant theory of why? So this multiverse concept gives us a reason why, okay? So it's like, imagine you're rolling around in a, in a basin, okay? And you're stable there, you're just fine, but then something kicks you out of the basin and you didn't know that there's a huge hill to roll down after you come out of that basin. But you didn't know that, you thought you, everything was just fine. Mm -hmm. You roll down that hill, you're gaining energy. At the bottom of the hill, something stops you. And then where does all that energy go? One of the hypotheses, and I'm highly simplifying here, is that the energy gained by rolling down a hill, that energy has to manifest in that object somehow, and it becomes an explosion. And gives birth, with enough energy, it gives birth to matter, everything that we know and love, and it expands. Because what the what? 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 Bye, my bye. Scientists think that around 4.5 billion years ago, a protoplanet around the size of Mars named Thea drifted into the path of Earth. It hit our young planet with a glancing blow, blasting trillions of tons of debris, a mixture of hot molten rock and gas out into space. The ejected material began orbiting our planet. The clumps of gas, dust and rock collided and stuck together, and possibly within just a few thousand years or less, it coalesced into a spherical shape. The young moon was so hot that it would have looked like a partly molten world hanging above the Earth. It would have formed much closer than it is today, possibly as much as 17 times closer, making it look enormous as it dominated the early sky. Any closer and gravity would have pulled the debris back and the moon would have never existed. What the what? 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 Bye, my bye. What, what the what? Ah! What the what? This is six million years of human evolution in just 40 seconds. So here you'll see the earliest hominids like southern apes and other primates we shared ancestors with about five million years ago. So in the grand scheme of things, that's actually pretty recent. Humans started to shed some body hair and develop more modern characteristics with the evolution to Homo habilis. From here, humans evolved into Homo erectus, which are starting to look distinctly more human. Neanderthals were around about 100,000 years ago, so this is the penultimate stage of human evolution. And then we end it with our final evolution to Homo sapiens, which every single person watching this video looks like. Pretty cool, right? What the what? 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 What the what is that? What the what? What? What the what? What the what? There was no first human. It sounds insane, but I'm gonna explain why it's actually true. I mean, I'm human, so are my parents. My grandfather, great-grandfather, and great-great-grandfather, all humans. But my grandfather 185 million generations ago was a fish, and so was yours. If we stack up all those millions of generations, there's never a single point where one species became the next. Every generation is the same species as its parents and its children. A species only appears different from its ancestors when we compare two distantly separated generations. We can't pinpoint the exact moment a species came to be because that moment never happened. It's one of the craziest facts about evolution, but it's true. So just like you can't tell when this video begins or ends, what the what happened?
in! What the what is this place? What the what right now? What the what are you doing? What the what's going on here? What the what? What the actual what? The what is that? What the what? The what? What 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 the what? The what? <laughs> Welcome to Fairy Tale Land. Once upon a time, in a land so far away, a princess kissed a frog. Well, that just made his day. Far across the town, Red Riding Hood took fright. She found a wolf in Granny's bed when she told her good night. Oh, fairy tales, fairy tales, read them every day. Oh, what fun it is to hear how Goldilocks got away. Fairy tales, fairy tales, full of joy and laughter. Don't you know how this one ends? Why, it's happily ever after. Question we get is, how long have we been on planet Earth? Is it 3.5 billion years as the evolutionists say that life first appeared? Or according to Genesis, is it much shorter? Well, according to the Hebrew Pentateuch, which is the one that I believe is the most accurate, it's 4004 BC, that's about 6,000 years ago. But check this out. You've got the Septuagint saying 5872, and you can see a few other dates as well, too. So the latest or oldest date that any of these give is 6,825 years versus 3.5 billion years. Which is it? Let me know in the comments section.